Brand new DJI Transmission Standard Combo. How it works? What's the difference between this and the hybrid monitor version? And the most important questions, when and why do we need it? Stop that. Now, the first major difference is of course the receiver. In the model we know from the hybrid monitor combo and the running 4D transmission system, the receiver was integrated into the monitor, while in the new standard version, the receiver is simply a separate device in the style of all other wireless systems. Here it is worth mentioning that the new DJI receiver is of course fully compatible with the running 4D and the hybrid monitor combo. Moreover, the design of the receiver is not the only difference, but let's start with the similarities. For the similar price you get, the same phenomenal range, the same seamless auto frequency hopping, ultra low latency and unlimited number of receivers in broadcast mode. Now the main difference is of course the hybrid monitor comes with an integrated monitor and it has gimbal camera and focus control and independent recording and playback. On the other hand, something you won't find in the hybrid monitor combo and you get in the standard version is transmission metadata, dual link output and support for fractional frame rates. You can buy a standard combo where you will find a complete set of transmitter and receiver or you can buy the receiver alone so you can expand the set that you already have. The transmitter and receiver are exactly the same physical size, have exactly the same antenna placement, exactly the same mounting options and power supply, but we will come back to that in a moment. Actually, they are almost identical, so to identify them you have of course the product name on the body, while the receiver also has red markers around the antenna. On the front you will find the screen, buttons and many dial, while from the back you will find all signal function and power connectors. Here it is worth to mention that in the transmitter you have SDI signal input and output, which means that you can not only send the signal straight to the transmitter, but also use it for a camera monitor for example. What's great is that in receiver you get up to 3 signal outputs, 2 SDI and HDMI, from which the signal comes out at the same time. And yes, of course the receiver is also a cross converter, so it doesn't matter if you use SDI or HDMI input signal, because on the receiver both are always available. This is especially helpful when your camera has an HDMI and your monitor has an SDI port and vice versa. Originally, both the transmitter and receiver comes with three power options. The first is WB37 battery, the next is an NPF style battery plate that you can replace yourself in just a minute and the third is a pit-up cable to which you can attach a really wide range of batteries. And if you are using the transmitter with a Ronin RS2, RS3 or R2 Pro, then you can power the transmitter straight from the gimbal using the cable that is included. What is absolutely fantastic, both devices have a hot swap battery feature, which means you can use two batteries at the same time and swap them without turning off the transmission. The device automatically switches to the second battery. This will be very useful at the live events when you want to have continuous transmission for a whole day. Now, Another great power option I would like to show you is a V-mount adapter from Tilta, by far my best choice, and in a situation where I use a shoulder or handheld camera, this is just brilliant. All you have to do is mount a male V-mount plate on one side and a female plate on the back. With this solution, you get three great benefits. The easiest and fastest way to mount the transmitter to the camera, powerful batteries, which result in extra long operating time, and the best part is that thanks to the special connectors, that the transmitter and the receiver have on two sides, the plate works as a kind of power daisy chain. So not only the transmitter gets power from the battery, but also gives the power to the next device. So if you have a camera or a monitor with a V-mount plate, then you only need one battery to power a whole set like this. Super cool and super professional. What's more, I also recommend you a Tilta adapter for a hybrid monitor. I still dream of a TB50 or 51 battery adapter, but about that another time. Now, right next to DC connector, you have a USB-C port. It's not for power, but if you change the USB function to voice call and connect the headphones to the receiver and to the transmitter, you can then contact each other remotely. The menu is super friendly and simple. You have quick access to all the settings you need. Linking transmitters and receivers is incredibly easy. All you have to do is to hold down the menu control dial on the transmitter and receiver until you see the linking icon. The red light will turn green when the device is connected and the second light will turn green when you give a video signal. 
Now, DJI transmission combo, no matter if it is a standard combo or hybrid monitor combo, or even the 4D version, has two operating types, that is, control and broadcast mode. Control mode is basically exactly what it is called. Only in this mode you can control the gimbal focus and camera settings when you use it with a hybrid monitor and additional accessories. And when you use it together with a standard combo transmission, even though there is nothing to control, this mode also has its own huge benefits. Because transmission power is a bit higher than in broadcast mode and because of that, the transmission distance, dynamic bitrate adjustment, auto frequency hopping and also anti-interference performance is slightly better in most situations, but it has one limitation. You can use only two receivers in this mode. It can be two standard receivers, two hybrid monitors, or one monitor and one standard receiver. And yes, I know what are you thinking. That for many of us, this is not a limitation at all, because in most situations, we can actually deal with only one receiver, and the second one is a kind of extra upgrade. But are we sure about that? Just imagine the situation. A big professional movie set, you would like to give a monitor to everyone, both the director and the DOP, as well as the light department, costumes, makeup, and of course the focus puller and even the producer. Now, of course, you can mess around with the cable installation and signal distribution, but imagine how much easier it would be if everyone got a receiver with a monitor and that's it, problem solved. Everyone is happy and everyone feels like Christopher Nolan. Yeah! That's why, in such a situation, the perfect solution will be the second mode, which is broadcast, because here you can use an unlimited number of receivers. Another fantastic use of broadcast mode is a situation where you have many transmitters and receivers on the same time at the same set. Let's say you are shooting an event or film with four cameras, and now you would like to have the options to view each of the different cameras once in a while to check if everything is okay or to adjust the focus, or you are DOP and you want to have a live view of each camera while shooting but you want to have only one monitor. No problem, just set the transmitter of each camera to broadcast mode and set the channels. What's more, you can even mark each transmitter individually, let's say A, B, C, D. Now in the receiver, choose broadcast mode and refresh the list. Then select the icon of the camera you want to see and that's it. This is even easier if you use a hybrid monitor because then you have the symbols of each camera on the main display and switching between them is super fast and extremely easy. Honestly, there are really a lot of combination in broadcast mode and I think this is a fantastic setup that will be very helpful on very complex and challenging film and TV production. This is by far one of the most important features when it comes to choosing the right wireless transmission. 60 millisecond latency, 6 km range, O3 technology, which is already legendary. Now, I hear very often that why would anyone need such a range? And of course, I don't think many of us need that much distance, because even in car scenes, when you are not physically sitting in the car, you are probably not always going to be that far away. But remember that the phenomenal signal strength means not only the operating distance, but also the extremely stable performance in a wide range of difficult and challenging conditions. You know, the perfect environment for any wireless device is an open flat space where the antennas on the receiver and transmitter have no obstacles between them. On the other hand, all things that limit this range are high buildings, solid walls, large metal structures, power lines and places with many other different kinds of wireless device and a lot of people. So I thought that the perfect place for testing will be a place where I can find all these harsh elements at the same time. Sports life even thousands of people with smartphones that works in the 2.4 and some already 5 GHz range, huge building, heavy solid walls, lots of constructions, lots of different electrical devices, lighting, screens, multimedia, wireless microphones. Now, it was a pretty clear to me that this system will perform perfectly in such conditions because almost a year ago I tested the hybrid monitor combo in front of almost 50,000 people in a stadium, but here in a way it was even more challenging because the building is completely enclosed box, built with huge solid massive walls and here I was really very surprised by how great the transmitter performs even under such extreme obstacles. 
In fact, I moved around almost the entire building. I was in every single hallway, on every floor in the basement. I walked even four floors through a staircase and even walked outside from the completely other side where I was basically about 300 meters away from the transmitter but including several layers of these massive walls. Something unbelievable. In addition to great signal range and great performance through the walls, transmission stability is an extremely important feature in all my projects, especially in a tight place where thousands of people use uh, thousands of smartphones. And here I would like to show you something. In most of the live TV projects I've been working on over the years, I use extremely expensive wireless equipment. This is our very advanced transmitter, which is mainly designed to work with cameras used in live TV. The main feature of this transmitter is that it not only transmits wireless video with very low latency, but you can also use it to remotely control the settings of compatible cameras such as aperture, filters and white balance for example. Now, you have almost identical features in control mode when you use the DJI transmission with the Ronin 4D or some Sony cameras, so why is there such a difference in price here? Another big downside of this equipment, besides the price, is the very complicated setup. The transmitter is small and friendly, but the receiver is a huge device. On top of that, the external antennas of the receiver have to be installed in several places in the stage, and each antenna must be connected to ob wan by cables. Now, why I am talking about this? Because over the past few years, I have used such a set hundreds of times and almost never, I repeat almost never, without any problems. The strongest interference usually comes during halftime because this is when a thousand of people use their phones. You know, they send pictures, write messages or make phone calls. Of course, there is a solution for this because you just need to find a better operating frequency of the transmitter but first of all, you have to do it manually and two, it is not always easy to access to camera. However, with the DJI transmitter, this problem is basically gone thanks to a triple band automatic frequency hopping, which automatically scans the environment and simply search the best frequency channels to reduce interference. What's more, this is not the only thing on which DJI transmission is better than equipment for 60 grand. DJI claims a transmission latency of around 60 milliseconds, while in my test it came out even better because only 50, and this is also a result that places DJI transmission in the top of the most professional broadcast transmission lineup. On top of that, O3 Pro besides the frequencies such as 2.4 and 5.8 also use DFS channels. DFS is dynamic frequency selection, which is a function of using 5 GHz Wi-Fi frequencies that are generally reserved for military or weather radar. And the main benefits of use DFS is to increase the number of Wi-Fi channels. But remember, not every country allows you to use these frequencies, so be sure to check your local regulations. Now, if you want to activate a DFS channel, then the transmitter will not turn it on immediately because according to international regulations, the device must first scan and check the channels to prevent any interference with radar. That is an automatic process and takes about a minute. Tips number one. In control mode, the signal strength is stronger than in broadcast mode, so actually the only interference I have experienced is when the receiver is too close to the transmitter. That's why both devices should be more than a meter from each other. And you should do the same in case when you want to use several transmitters in the same place at the same time. If for some reason the automatic frequency search mode is affected by interference, you can always switch to manual frequency selection. In the receiver, you simply select the channel that is defined by the green dot and it's even easier with a hybrid monitor because there you have a simple graphic with red and green bars that suggest the best channel. Next tip is the video mode change for better performance in broadcast mode. You can set the image quality in HD mode the transmission bitrate is higher than, but less available channels. Or you can choose smooth mode and then transmission bitrate is lower with lower video quality but more available channels. If multiple devices are working in the same place in broadcast mode, try to make them all work in the same mode. Apart from changing settings and modes, of course you can improve the operation range by using high gain antennas and placing the receiver vertically and on the tripod for example. 
Another important feature that is worth mentioning is of course the transferred metadata from cameras such as RED and ARRI. Unfortunately, I won't show you how it works because I don't have such cameras yet, but I'm sure that you will find some video about this option somewhere in a while. And if I can find it faster, I will leave you a link in the description under the video. I don't think anyone here is wondering if it is worth buying a DJI transmission, but I think the question is which kit is for you. So let's get this clear as quickly as possible. If you want to be some sort of special shots expert and you want to use your camera on a remote head or on any kind of rig and if you need not only wireless video but also remote control over the settings and movement of the camera, you want to have an integrated remote follow focus and even the option to expand this set with additional accessories then this set combined with a gimbal is the perfect tool for you. Of course, the hybrid monitor version is not exclusively designed for gimbal and camera control only, and it is a phenomenal piece of equipment by itself. You know, super bright screen, super clear menu, easy access to all options, one battery, no cables, instant operation, much easier than building a director's monitor kit. And honestly, since I got this equipment, I use it on a very single set and I can't imagine life without it. However, not everyone specializes in this kind of shots or perhaps they just do it with other tools. So if you don't need focus, gimbal and camera control and all you are looking for is a phenomenal wireless setup with crazy range, with ultra low latency, with unbelievable transmission stability, then the standard combo may be the transmission system that you need. On the other hand, if you are a third group, that is, you need a hybrid monitor combo to control your equipment and you want to upgrade your set with additional monitoring or record live events in a very professional way, then the ideal solution will be an extra video receiver. Guys, that's it for today. I hope the video was helpful. Thanks for all the comments, likes and messages and see you in the next video.